I've got to be honest with you, I have not been creating content because I was feeling a lot of discouragement. And one of the things I still cannot get over, years into ministry, I've been in ministry for over a decade. I have pastored churches, I've worked with um, so many people. I still have had to deal, to contend with discouragement. The thing that makes discouragement so hard is not that you are not listening to God or you're not being prayerful. And I've heard so much said about that. People say, if you are prayerful, if you're connected to God, you will not feel discouragement. And that's not true. There's a lot of fatigue that comes with ministry, the responsibility and the work that we do. I get that. But I think one of the biggest things that's so overwhelming about this is how this tool is used against us. A few years ago, God spoke to me and he said to me, uh, the way to how do you discourage a giant? And he asked me, how do I discourage a giant? And I, how do you destroy a giant? How do you fight a giant? And I, I couldn't answer this. And he, he gave me the answer. He says, you discourage him. If you want to win over uh, an enemy that is too big for you, you win by discouraging them. And over the course of my life, I've had to contend with discouragement, dealing with the feelings of inadequacy, dealing with the feelings of, of fatigue, being overwhelmed, and getting to a point where you rather not do something than to do it. And I've had to really battle this for the past couple of weeks, which is why even the content I was sharing was content I literally recorded a few weeks ago that I was sitting in the drafts on, on YouTube. And uh, I don't know, honestly speaking, I don't know how to deal with discouragement. But one of the most important things that I've found is to return back to the message of what God has placed in your heart. I've always known that I'm eccentric. I've always known that I feel a certain type of anger towards things that other people are comfortable in. I've always known that when I speak, I make people uncomfortable. I've been comfortable with that in my whole life. I've always known that I'm not the kind of person who's going to have a million subscribers on a channel because ultimately the message I preach is not the million people subscribed type of message. In fact, growing up, I remember I was speaking to my wife about this earlier and I said to her, God was very clear to me as I was growing up that I'm calling you for a remnant and a remnant is not everybody. A remnant is some people, the few people that are left, the few people that remain to certain truths that are there is who I'm calling you for. So I never was under the impression that I'm going to be a massive person in the sense of that. I know I'm a great preacher. Nobody can tell me that. I, I know that I'm called by God. Nobody can tell me that. But learning to contend with small audiences. And I believe that God has a plan and that God will fulfill what he has called me for in due time. And, and the nations shall see that because that is part of the promises of God to me. But learning to do that in, in obscurity and insignificance sometimes is overwhelming. And you're talking to a man who's been sitting for 20 something years waiting for certain promises that God has given concerning word that he has delivered for me in my life. And I don't have a problem with that. Once again, it's just at times it does get overwhelming. And there are times when you feel um, the need for the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And when I say comfort, I mean to be ministered to by the Holy Spirit. And so often I take time away. I take time away from ministry. I take time away from people. And if someone calls me, I, I may not even answer the call because I'm trying to take time away to find balance and to find meaning in all of this, in all of this. And I, I don't want to be the kind of man who will die for ministry. It's not my responsibility. Jesus already died for you. And so the call of God over my life, and I'm, I'm learning as well to take rest, moments and periods of rest. Please forgive me when I don't post any content. Um, I am an avid student of the word. I still study the word. And I promise you I'm reading and I'm studying. And I'm, I've got some incredible stuff for you in a couple of weeks. But I had, your boy had to deal with a lot of discouragement. And I thank God for people like my wife who are there. Who call and say, listen, get back on the horse. Let's push. Let's get back to it. I think if it wasn't for people like that. I would have been discouraged and I would have probably left a lot of what we do now in this ministry and in this time. I want to encourage you as well, if you are going through discouragement, uh, discouragement is the tool of the enemy to destroy giants. Um, if you really think about it from a strategic point of view, if you fight the motivation of your enemy, 
you have won the battle without having to raise a sword. The enemy knows that if he can kill your motivation for serving God, your motivation for building, your motivation for working, then he won't do it in the first place. And some of these things I believe so fundamentally that this channel is a tool for the work of God in, in this time. I believe that this channel is needed, this information is needed. Um, I, I'm gonna be sharing in a week a message that is going to knock your socks off. And um, it's going to be very, very controversial. It's gonna be so messy because a lot of my old teachings are actually built on the principle that I'm gonna be sharing and saying, hey, by the way, I was wrong. And uh, that's coming in a couple of days and I promise you I'm not even going to enjoy shooting that. And I had to research, as I was researching, I called, there are about a couple of apostles I trust, my father is one of them, and I sent it to him and I said, dad, can you just review? Am I going crazy? Am I, am I reading this properly or what? Because this is one of the most fundamental Christian principles and doctrines that we teach today. I taught about this a few days ago, literally. Um, and now I have to recant. This is the first time in my, in my life having to recant a message and say, hey, listen, whoop, I was wrong, I was wrong. This is not truth. And, um, you know, and, and uh, having to, to learn to deal with that and ha learning to, to haggle um, with myself and to haggle with information and say, wait a minute, we, we had entirely built a wrong foundation for this. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard. But I, I find the greatest joy of my life in serving God. I find the greatest joy of my life being in his word. I love the fact that in this place, we can share the truths of God without having to worry about who gets offended in the process. And because I'm tired of that, I'm tired of the church um, having us, us having to dignify what the church does because we cannot separate between God and man. I'm tired of, of building religious zeal instead of God's zeal because most of us are zealous about our churches and not necessarily God. I'm tired of, of defending certain viewpoints because we grew up with them because that's who I am. Many people don't understand this. I, I'm a church rat. I grew up in church. I was, you know, on the altar. The week I was born, I was in the church the week I was born. And I've been in church every single day of my life. I've done the rat race my whole life. I've been in a service almost every single Sunday of my life. And, and so there's nothing new to me in the world of the church. I've seen it all. I've seen people spit and I've seen people do this. I've seen demons cast out. I've seen it all. And not to get tired of it or to get exhausted by it, but because I've witnessed it. Um, learning to say, hey, listen, maybe we're not doing this right, is not an, an affrontation to the church. It's not a, 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 a dislike for the church. It's a love for people. We do this because we love people. I do this because I love you. And whoever you are, wherever you are listening from, I do this because I love you. And having to take time out of my day, my businesses, I don't survive off this channel. Um, having to take time away from my family and my responsibilities out there and say, hey, listen, we're gonna, let me sit down, let me have a conversation, let me research, let me spend hours in study and, and whatnot uh, to, to do this and, and to plan and to be strategic and to, to, to do this is because of love. And having to do all of that to calm down, there are moments where sometimes too much is taken out of us. And uh, I think about this all the time when I think about the story of Jesus and the woman that touched the hem of his garment. Everybody touched him. Everybody wanted something for him, from him. That is a difficult place in leadership where people are demanding. Nobody's pouring in. Nobody feeds you. you know? And so you have uh, the disciples around you who are there. They want for you. They're around you because they want something from you. You have crowds that are coming from you. This one wants healing. This one wants a blessing. This one wants a miracle. This one wants money. Everybody wants a little bit of something from you. And at that moment when everything is happening, one person comes into your life and this person takes a chunk. I mean, this woman pulled. The Bible says he felt power leave him. You know, he felt power leave him. I don't know what that woman pulled, but that woman, she must have been so greedy for that miracle that she, she sucked out everything out of his, his strength. And that man realized something has completely changed. But can you imagine even then that demand, the way nations and worlds and perspectives and people are in demanding greatness out of you every day, 24 seven, no mistakes and so forth and so forth. It's a lot. I wanna encourage you because I know sometimes even in this forum, I speak to leaders, I speak to people who are in business, parents and whatever, in spite of what is being demanded out of you, 
take time out, recuperate, heal in order for you to get back to it. I look at the story of people like, like Elijah. Elijah. Uh, Jezebel sends a word. She says, I'm going to kill you. I know what you did to my prophets and I'm going to kill you. And in fear and trepidation and he's worried, he's concerned, he goes to the desert. And the Bible then says while he was there, all he did was to sleep and eat. I think the cure, and I just want to say this out loud, I think the cure for feeling that way, if you feel tired, if you feel spent, if you feel discouraged, get some rest, get some food, get some sleep, come back and push again. And so I'm excited to be back. I'm really excited to be having these next, these conversations with you. I want to give you a heads up. Um, I've got a book coming out in a few days, an ebook. I want to focus on ebooks. I have about 13, 15 ebooks sitting in my uh, laptop, you know, in my Dropbox that I'm writing that I want to release. And I try to write books that nobody else is writing information about. There are two books that I'm working on right now that are the core of what I'm focusing on. And that will shape a whole new generation of thinking in the next couple of weeks. The first book I'm releasing is called Discernment. How to get discernment. What is it? How do I get it? And so its focus is to help you understand the gift of discernment. I think a lot of people uh, don't quite teach enough about what discernment is. But I believe that it's necessary now in this time, in this era. What is discernment? Discernment is... Essentially, um, I, I liken in the book, I compare it to the sense of smell, your ability to smell. And I think we often don't take for granted the power of the sense of smell. It is the last line of defense against eating things that are corrupted. And a lot of us in our generation, in our time, we don't know what's right anymore. Everything is, is, is not black and white anymore. It used to be black and white. You could see evil and good. It was easy. But now it's almost right and right. You know, there's something that's right and then something that's almost right. And Jesus also gives us the recipe for this. He says that it's a little leaven. It takes a little lie to change an entire truth, right? And so I, this book will be a key cornerstone to help you dis develop discernment and understanding concerning what God wants for you in your life. And I'm going to share that with you. Secondly, and most importantly, I am going to be making all my books free all my books for free. And I think that uh, I'm going to tell you about the second book just now. It's going to be super exciting. But I'm going to make all my books free on EcclesiaCollective.com. You're welcome to go over there and download any book you want and any content you want for free. I think God has really started to bless us financially, me and my wife. And we want to honor God the best way we can and to make this information for free. So resources and the information that we share on this platform will be exclusively free at all times and you guys are welcome to go download it. Now the problem is people don't respect free things. People don't value things that are free because basically it's free, right? I didn't work for it. I didn't earn it. But I hope that you guys are going to take this. Um, these books are made with a whole whole a heart of obedience to God and our submission to God in that regard. So I hope you guys are going to treasure them as much as we I'm investing this much time and we are investing this much time in writing them and giving them to you for free. So the first book is, is about discernment. The second book is called The Demonic Engine. The Demonic Engine. In the past couple of years, in the past, uh, I want to say half a, dec half a decade actually, um, there have been some books written on demonology and stuff like that but you know it's not great content uh, i think a lot of people have so many massive questions concerning demonology and stuff like that i'm going to teach you the sevens of sevens a principle that you will find exact exactly working in the principle of demonology i'm also going to make videos on some of these things so that for those people that are not great readers and you'd rather listen to a video on it if you don't mind listening to a four hour discussion on demonology, this is going to be the platform where we're going to be doing that. So uh, we're going to be releasing quite massive, um, big uh, conversations on these topics and these books that we are going to be doing that are going to really help you shape some of that stuff. However, in the next week or two, I'm going to actually release, a, 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 well, not really a book, but I'm going to release a whole video on the gifts of the Holy Spirit like you've never heard them before. I have always made it a point that whenever I sit down to have a discussion with you, it is not derivative, right? So I don't ever teach you something that you will find on another platform. If you ever, ever get a sermon out of me where it's something that you've heard somewhere else, um, 
probably wasn't me, probably it was an off day. I don't even know how to explain that. We don't do that here. Here we teach re revealed information, things that we've studied and things that are new, things that are different, things that are exciting, not only exciting, but things that are true, things that are biblical. And I will always make it a commitment in my life to teach you something that that you've never found anywhere else. Because I make it a point to go places, to search, to pray, to search in God and to find out from God things that nobody else has. It is, revelation is a very core part of what the pulpit ministry should be about. And in this ministry, in this house, I've made it a rule, right? I've made it a rule that I will never come to this pulpit and dishonor you with stuff that someone else preached. I don't do that. And so you will find that, um, and it's part of my sacred honor and oath to God that we will delve, we will dive, we will search um, the mysteries of God in order for us, for us to make them plain, simple, and understood here as much as anywhere else. And so I encourage you to just stick, stick with us. I encourage you to bear with us. I encourage you to uh, strengthen us, encourage us when you can. I genuinely appreciate your comments. I've often disregarded them. In fact, I have a rule now. Um, even on TikTok, I remember when people comment and they say something really and I, I just like it and I move on because I don't want to indulge um, hey, you're so amazing. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm so amazing. I don't want to indulge that. I, I've always wanted to maintain a, a heart of, uh, a heart of, of uh, trying to create a disconnect between you know, becoming addicted to affirmation. But now I'm learning and I'm realizing that this now, there are times when encouragement is needed. So I thank you so much for your encouragement. And a lot of you comment and a lot of you share, even here on YouTube, you say, you know, great things. Um, some people say stuff to get a rise out of, out of us and to get us upset and to contradict or to have conflict and so forth and so forth. That's all good. My heart will not change concerning this. And uh, in moments where you see I'm, I'm away or I've disappeared, please, please send encouragement. I also want us to talk about the next level um, in terms of an update of what we are doing and where we are. I want to let you know. I want to let you know even right now in this juncture of ministry, we want to grow our platform and we want to collaborate with a lot more people. And uh, there are certain voices I want to hear uniquely in this generation. So Ecclesia Collective can become what it was, what it was meant to be. We didn't build this platform for it to be a, a one person team, all right? Um, we built it for it to be a source of Christian con 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 content, right? Content, apologies there. Um, Christian content that you will not find anywhere else in the world. Content that is uh, true, content that is centered, content that is godly, and not only to be about the Bible, but to be about the culture. Because I have always said this, God called me to address a culture. And um, most people are bound by this culture. And so if I speak theologically, and I'm a theologian by study, right? I'm a theologian by study, but if, I, if I'm here just hammering to you principles of theology, I'm going to miss a lot of people in the mark. And I've learned that a, a complete um, investment in theological perspective without taking the time to talk to a culture is dangerous, is toxic. And so we will give you a little bit of both. We will balance it out. There are topics that I want to talk about that are not not like nicely. They're not, they're not topics people enjoy talking about. There are things I wish somebody had taught me about marriage before I got married. There are things I wish the culture, uh, somebody would stand up and rebuke in the culture. And that's what we want to do. There are things concerning health, concerning wellness, concerning sex, concerning education, concerning socioeconomics, uh, social, you know, political issues, uh, and so forth and so forth that we have to talk about. We have to be able to talk about these things. And the danger is that building a platform that only talks about theology will inherently lose people in that. And so it is our responsibility to do so. And so if you know, or if you really have incredible people that you, you think these people are phenomenally, uh, would be a great addition to this team, you know, let us know and we will reach out to them and say, hey, listen, let's work together and so forth and so forth. We are based in um, East Strand in South Africa. Um, just out of Johannesburg, and um, and also it's a it's a mobile team. We've got 
camera guys, we've got all these, I don't mind, we can come over to wherever you are and we can sit down, we can shoot, we can do all of that stuff together. The idea now is to really get aggressive with growing, with uh, touching as many people as possible and reaching as many lives as possible. And I want you to be part of this journey with us and to really you know, strengthen us when we can. And if, if possible, iron sharpens iron, right? It is one of the most popular Christian sayings in the world, iron sharpens iron. But I actually love a very different scripture that explains the same principle. It says one twig alone can be broken, but a bunch of them together you can't. And so there's, there's tensile strength in numbers. When we are able to come together and collectively work at a goal, it is absolutely doable and is something we can do together. So I want to encourage you to jump on, support us, stand with us, pray with us, um, whatever way you can. And um, we don't ask usually for donations. If you can, donate. We would love to do that. Our goal now is to reach as many people as possible, to give the best content possible, to really shape, reshape how the next generation of Christian leaders, um, and not just Christian leaders, but the next generation of the remnant that are coming, the select few that say, hey, listen, we, we, we want more. I want more. I personally want more. I want more out of the church experience. I want more out of my Christian journey. I am tired. Hebrews tells us that until when I begin to going to stay talking about elementary principles. I get so frustrated when someone says, hey, I'm a faith preacher. What does that mean? Right? What does that mean? Can we grow past the issues of faith and repentance from dead works and, and so forth and so forth? And even the, the, the end times and messages of the end times, there's so much more in the Christian faith. And I guarantee you that this is a platform that will give you so much more than you even bargained for. And we are going to be um, in the forefront of delivering that in the next couple of years. I'm excited. My name is Guidance Kandemiri. I am blessed to be part of Ecclesia Collective. I'm blessed to found, to be the founder of Ecclesia Collective. And I am more than that. I'm blessed to have the privilege to speak to you every single time I'm on this platform. It is such an honor for me to do that. And I'm grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you so much for tuning in and to, for listening to me. God bless you.